Hello and welcome to World Business Report. I'm Tig Enright. Well, we start with Europe's farmers because, as you've been hearing, protests that began in France and then Germany have been spreading across the continent. Demonstrations are taking place in Poland, Hungary and Italy today. The farmers venting their anger over soaring fuel and fertiliser costs, low prices for their produce and increasingly restrictive EU regulations. Well, Italy's government has promised tax breaks to ease the hardship for its farmers after hundreds began gathering with their tractors this week on motorways outside of Rome and Turin. And in Cyprus, farmers blocked the entrance to the European Union's offices in the capital Nicosia on Thursday. And there have also been demonstrations in Bulgaria and more tractor protests across Spain for the third day in a row, with farmers disrupting traffic in Barcelona and in other cities all over the country. And there have been renewed talks on an EU trade deal with South America. They've raised anxieties even further. We are tired of working and getting underpaid. We are fed up that they won't let us do what we want to do in the fields. They force us to plant what they want us to plant. They force us to use the herbicide that they want. And apart from that, we are being underpaid. We want to be left in peace, to plant crops in the fields when it's their time, and not when they tell us, and to stop the price rises. The agriculture business is going badly, and we all need to demonstrate. Farmers, truckers, taxi drivers, everyone. Let's see if we can fix this, because there's a lot of paperwork, bureaucracy. They don't let us plough. Just let us plough in peace instead of all the paperwork. Well, on Tuesday, Brussels made a concession to farmers. The European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, said that she would scrap EU plans to halve the use of chemical pesticides by 2030. That had been part of the EU's flagship policy to make the continent carbon neutral by 2050. Brussels also delayed rules forcing farmers to leave fields unused or fallow to protect biodiversity. But she did warn that farmers that uh, warn farmers that agriculture needs to be reformed. Well, Joss Ubels is a cattle farmer from the Netherlands and the vice president of the Farmers Defence Force. He told us why he's unhappy with the EU's agricultural rules. Well, first of all, of course, it's the, it's the administration bureaucracy. Um, uh, many people don't know, but the European Union tells us what to sow and what to sow, uh, um, uh, harvest on our fields and when to sow it and when to harvest this. And they are checking this, this with live uh, satellite imagery every three days all over Europe. So we, we're being watched by European Union from the satellites every three days. They invent legislation to prevent uh, um, uh, climate change or whatever, but they, they, they don't um, invent rules that, that change things for the better. We as a practicing farmer see that the rules that the European Union op is opposing on us is not helping the environment in, any, environment in any way. How good it was meant to be, but it, it doesn't. Josh Ubel's there with the uh, viewpoint of Europe's farmers. Let's speak now to Professor Tim Benton, who's director of the Environment and Society Centre at the Chatham House Think Tank. Um, thanks for joining us today, Tim. Um, the farmers have a whole catalogue of gripes, don't they? Uh, some of those issues, such as regulations, are very much in the EU's gift to, to implement or not to implement. Um, what do you make in the, in the whole of their reasons for protesting? Have they got um, viable or reasonable complaints to make? Yes, absolutely. I think, I think they do. I mean, farmers and to a certain extent citizens are trapped in a food system that we've designed over 60 odd years and is increasingly not working for anybody. Um, the UN's Food and Agricultural Organization recently estimated that the costs on the environment and on people's health of our food system is about 10 to 12 percent of global GDP. So there is an absolute need from an environmental perspective and from a health perspective to reform the food system. But the trouble is that farmers are really trapped at the bottom of that. They're the small businesses businesses selling into consolidated industry. They're price gouged, gouged on the one hand by the, the people they're selling to. And on the other hand, they're subject to environmental uh, threats from droughts and heat waves and their lives are becoming more difficult. 
and the environmental regulations are getting tougher and tougher and tougher. So they're kind of being squeezed on all sides, plus, of course, the um, uh, opening up of new trade deals so that com global competition uh, uh, helps undercut them or issues to do with uh, grain dumping from Ukraine. So all in the round, farmers, most farmers are struggling to have a livelihood and looking ahead, they just see life becoming more difficult. Looking, so, spe looking specifically, Tim, at the uh, environmental regulations, those that were planned and which are now being watered down, how out of the ordinary are they on a global scale? Was the EU planning to have some of the, the best or is this just bringing, us, bringing the EU up to, to, to the international norms? No, uh, the Euro European Union is perhaps the most stringent but I would say uh, uh, equally the urgency of the need to change is really becoming very apparent uh, wherever you look in the world. You know, extreme weather growing all of the time, the volatility of the whole system to um, biodiversity loss and to climate change, droughts, heat waves and so on. We've got to start accelerating this and yeah. the EU is a leader in this space. But that doesn't make it easier for the farmers. But at we're the, not paying them enough sure. to, to to take this on. At the other end of the spectrum, then the farmers are upset about soaring fuel prices, fertilizer prices, and the low prices that that they're getting for their goods. Yes. One might think that they're looking for more subsidies, more market interventions by the EU. And I'm sure there'll be many people saying that that's the last thing that should be happening. Yeah. Ultimately, the problem is that we are we expect as citizens and consumers, we expect food to be cheaper than it's possible to produce. So that's the real issue that we need to address over the next few years is how to make the market work to reward farmers with the right amount of money for livelihoods and us as consumers have to expect in the long run that food will become more expensive because we're producing it in a way, in a way that creates these environmental impacts that ultimately harm us. OK, Professor Tim Benton from Chatham House, thank you for joining us. Thank you.